Welcome to the lobby of the Curry Tech County Extension Center. As you enter the lobby, you'll notice a display of historic photos which depict extension work and farm demonstrations and home demonstrations throughout the history of Cooperative Extension here in Curry Tech County. As you enter the lobby, the first image you'll see to the right is of Curry Tech County 4-H Health Project winners in 1946. In the front row is Oatley Austin of Kerala and Fred Sargent of Poplar Branch. From left to right, the back row consists of Grace Dowdy of Poplar Branch, Robert Morgan of Moyoc, Clara Reese Pointer of Moyoc, Eldon Jones of Barco, Cheryl Hampton of Coinjock, and an obviously camera shy Jean Bowden of Kerala. These 4-H members kept a health record. And at the end of the year, those in the northern end of the county were examined by a Dr. Barber, while those in the southern end of the county were examined by Dr. Wright. Students in Currituck were examined by Dr. Moore. These doctors chose the healthiest and most physically fit girl and boy from each school club. That year, the countywide health king was Robert Morgan of Sligo, and the countywide queen was Grace Dowdy of Grandy. Moving to the next photo, you will see Uncle Graham Woodhouse and the car he used to supply eggs. Also pictured is Mrs. Virginia Edwards Brumsey, the Curry Tech Home Demonstration Agent from 1930 through 1943. This was likely part of a home and farm demonstration tour throughout the county that year. The next image, Charlie Sawyer, is shown with his potatoes produced as a demonstration in 1935 using Agrico fertilizer. His yield that year was 90 bushels per acre, and it sold at a price of $1 per bushel. Moving down through the lobby, the next image you'll see on your right shows Mr. J.J. Dixon, who's in the center of the image, with multiple 4-H club boys from Knott's Island. These boys were turning under a cover crop of rye on the farm of Mr. W.J. Ansel of Knott's Island. Mr. Ansel would graze cattle on the rye in the winter and early spring, and then turn under that crop and the subsequent manure produced by the cattle to enhance his soil fertility and increase his crop yields. Moving on to the next image, you see Lawrence Dozier Jr., who is shown planting Coker 101 cottonseed on his father's farm at Jarvisburg. Mr. Dozier used all treated seed, with the exception of a check plot where the seed was not treated. This was part of a demonstration to test the different types of seed treatments. At harvesting time, two rows from each plot were picked and weighed, and the difference varied from 2 to 13 pounds for the three pickings. There was a total of 245 pounds harvested from the two treated rows, and only 227 pounds from those that were not treated. The next image you will see is Mr. W. W. Meggs of Maple, who is shown standing beside a stack of his jumbo peanuts. The yield of these peanuts was approximately 1,950 pounds per acre. The two stacks in front of Mr. Meggs were grown on Norfolk sandy loam soil, which was deficient in lime, and that yield was only 1,150 pounds. You can observe by the heights of the stacks as to the difference in the growth of the vines. This was an excellent demonstration of the use of more lime for better production of peanuts. The final image on the right of the lobby area is Dick and Mabel West of Moyoc, North Carolina. Their cured ham won second place at the North Carolina State Fair. Hogs were a major commodity here in Curry Tuck County, and many families had their own smokehouses and conducted their own hog killings and preserved meat, such as what you see here. If you turn around and head back toward the entrance of the lobby, the first image you'll see on your right is farmers who are observing and learning about an anhydrous ammonia fertilizer on the Roberts farm right here in Shawboro, North Carolina. This was an example of a field demonstration, which was and still are often conducted by extension agents. Mr. Luke Powell, county agent from 1933 to 1962, can be seen overseeing the demonstration in the back of this particular photo. 
The next image that you'll see on the wall is Mr. Adrian Mathias, who's pictured in the top right of this image with a group of men that were moving a truckload of cotton throughout the county to various mattress making centers in Curry Tuck. Now, program supervisors for the mattress making program were hired and trained by extension agents. This program supplied cotton for mattresses for lower income rural families who then learned to sew and make them for themselves. At the end of this program, which ran from 1940 to 1941, 1,290 cotton mattresses and 735 cotton field comforters were made for families. The next image that you'll see as you walk back toward the entrance on your right is Mr. Columbus Jarvis. Now, Mr. Columbus Jarvis was an extension cooperator, and this picture is from about 1935. Mrs. Elizabeth Sanderlin, a former home economics agent here from 1951 until 1969, wrote that Miss Virginia Brumsey worked with the Jarvis family during the Depression. And each year, Mr. Jarvis would call to get the instructions for making pear preserves. This is just a testament to the positive relationship between extension agents and farm families during that time. The next image shows Mrs. N.H. Ansel of Knott's Island with her turkeys. She was the mother of a former Curry Tuck commissioner, Norwood Ansel. Mr. Ansel was later elected to the North Carolina General Assembly. Home poultry production was also very important to Curry Tuck families in the early 1900s. If you look to your right in the little alcove, you'll see a picture of the Gallup and Sons Roadside Market in 1945. Roadside markets have always been a large feature of the landscape here in Curry Tuck County to capitalize on the tourists traveling through to get to the beach and increase farm income. Farm and home agents often offered advice and suggestions to help markets like these increase their profitability. The final picture that you will see as you move back toward the entrance of our lobby is a photo that shows Mr. A. H. Edwards, agriculture teacher at Moyoc School, with a group of his students helping to harvest and check the corn production demonstration conducted on the farm of Mr. Earl Cooper of Moyoc. And you can see Mr. Cooper in the to the left in the back of Mr. Edwards. This demonstration produced 82.3 bushels of corn. It was a great teaching opportunity to take these students out and help them harvest and check these corn plots during this time. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the tour of the photos in the Currituck County Extension Lobby area, and we hope to see you soon.